Today on The Joy of Editing, I'm working with the TK Magic Mixer along with TK9. I want to give you some understanding of what is happening when you're doing a multiple black and white conversion with the TK Magic Mixer. Plus, I'll also give you some tips and tricks, so stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm so glad you joined me again today. Today, I'll be working with the TK Magic Mixer, showing you what is actually happening when you're doing a multiple black and white conversion, because it can really be hard to wrap your head around, and I'll do the best I can to try to explain it to you today. Plus, I will give you some tips and tricks when working with TK9 and also with the TK Magic Mixer, so watch the entire video. You'll get a lot out of it. If you don't yet own the TK Magic Mixer, I will have an affiliate link directly below this video in the description. Just click on that link. When you use that link, which is my affiliate link, I make a small commission, and this helps me to keep these tutorials coming your way. So thank you all when you use my affiliate link. I really appreciate it. Also, I got some really good news for you. There's a new TK Print plugin which is absolutely free. And also Sean Bagshaw made a new TK print video series to go along with a new plugin, which is absolutely free. There will be links in the description below. There's also 25% off everything on Tony Kuiper's web store right now. You can use my promo code DK15, which will give you the 25% off and I will make a small commission only if you use that code. So I appreciate it. If you use that code, you'll save 25%. 25% off. This is a limited time offer. I don't know how long it'll run, but this is in honor of the launch of the new TK print plugin and the new TK video series, which are absolutely free. So pick yours up today. Well, then let's get started. Now I have this image, pretty cool image. It's a stock image. And what I want to do is four separate black and white conversions on this image. Now I'll start out by clicking the plus on the TK Magic Mixer. Now I don't have the LUM checkbox checked because that's for color images. And you'll notice I have a black and white conversion. Now I'm not going to make any adjustments here yet. Now let me explain how I'll do this. I want to do a separate conversion on the sand area. And then I'll do a conversion on the boat, and then the water, and then the sky. So four separate black and white conversions, starting with the sand. Now, please pay close attention, because if you do, you will get this. I'm using Photoshop's Smart Key Selection Tool, and what I'm going to do is select everything but the sand. You see that right there? down to the water's edge right there and then come over to the tk combo or cx panel and click this button right here a fill dialog comes up and make sure contents is set for black this is a drop down so make sure you have black selected and click ok and now you can see color has come back to this whole area now i do want to make the boat get color again and it's overshot this area of sand which i'll fix with a brush so what i'll do next i'm going to click this button on my tk selection brush to deselect my selection or you can click this button on the combo or cx panel to deselect now what i want to do is remember i'm only looking for the sand to get the black and white conversion the first black and white conversion so i need to bring color back to the boat and i need to fix this little area of the sand up so what i need to do is click on the mask to make it active and right now i have a white brush so i'm going to click on my black brush now i have a hundred percent opacity set here and all i need to do is just paint on this boat like this and i'll be masking the color back in okay and then i just have to paint over this area right here that's all i need to do now i need to fix this area up here so right now i have black paint i'm going to click on my white brush button and now with that soft edge just paint along the edge here and fix this up. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect because everything will get blended. Say I missed a little area there. I can click on my black brush and just paint that in right there. And so now what we have is just the sand area with the black and white conversion. So now we can go ahead and adjust our TK Magic Mixer. Now we have a lot of different ways of adjusting the Magic Mixer. We can click the randomize button and keep clicking it till we like how the sand looks. Now I like that. That looks pretty good. And then we could come here and adjust these sliders here. In other words, if I take this cyan red slider, move it more towards red, 
it will make the red colors turn lighter and if i move it to the left the reds will get darker or if i want my yellows to get lighter i can take the yellow blue slider and drag it more towards yellow which i think i'll do i'll drag this over to the left and see i want to lighten that sand up because normally you would want your sand to be pretty light you know so right around there and maybe I'll take the red slider and drag it to the left a little bit just to darken that up. And I think right about there looks pretty good. And now, so we know what we're doing, I'm going to double click Magic Mixer and type in sand. So we know this is the sand conversion. Next, I want to do the boat. So how do you think I would achieve that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is click the plus on the TK Magic Mixer to add a second Magic Mixer. Now you'll notice the whole image turns black and white but i only want to affect the boat so let's think about this how can i do that now i want you to notice something i'm just going to go ahead and click on these channel buttons okay and you'll notice the only area that will be affected will actually be the area that is represented in black on this first magic mixer layer in other words the sand will not get affected watch this here's red here is green here is blue but you notice the sand is not being affected. You see that? And there is yellow. I'm going to come back up here to red. Now we could reset the magic mixer by clicking this button, which I'll do. And now I only want to affect the boat. The magic mixer has been reset. So what I'm going to do is get clever here. I'm going to steal this mask. I'm going to hold my option or alt key down, click on the sand mask and drag it up to the top magic mixer layer. And now we can see this whole area is in color again. Now I only want to affect the boat. So let's think about this. If I go ahead and paint white over this boat area, it will be the only thing that will be getting affected. Because remember, the sand already has its black and white conversion on this layer, okay? And I'm on the second magic mixer layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and double click it. And we're going to call this one boat. So we don't get confused. Very important. And now I want to paint on this mask. So I'll click on the mask to make it active. And I want to bring this boat into a black and white conversion. So what I need to do right now, it's black, right? You see that on the mask right there? If I click this button, you can see that's where the boat is right there. I'll click this button again, the double arrow to see the image again. And now... With a white brush, right now I have a black brush, so I'll click on my white brush at 100%. Now, I'm going to be a little sloppy here. You can use selection tools, the TK selection brush, but I'm doing this quick. I'm doing a video here, and I have a nice soft edge, so I'll be careful here. And with that white brush, what I'll do is just paint on that black and white conversion. When I get down in here, it doesn't really matter because this has already been converted in the sand. If I overshoot that, that's okay. I'm just going to be as close as I can here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Everything will blend in the end, so it won't really matter. But now I've painted that conversion onto the boat. And now let me adjust this conversion. So I want that boat to go lighter. So I know there's yellow in here, there's orange and red. So I'm gonna take the yellow blue slider and drag it to the left. And you'll notice the boat gets lighter. I don't wanna go too light. A lot of times I just work with these sliders because I know uh, if I want blues to go lighter, I drag this yellow blue slider to the right. If I want blues to go darker to the left. If I want yellows lighter, move it to the left. If I want yellows darker, move it to the right. So I just want to lighten that up, maybe just to about right there. And then I could tweak the red. If I want my reds to go a little bit darker, I can go like that and maybe make the yellows just a little bit lighter. I've only affected the boat. And I know it's hard to wrap your head around, but it's not affecting the sand. It's only affecting the boat. Nothing is happening out in the water or the sky because you know what? If you notice the mask on the boat layer, the sky is black as well as this water area. That is why it's in color. Let me click the double arrow button on the combo panel. So now you can see that mask. See, any area in black is going to get color any area in white will have the black and white conversion but in this case only the boat is getting this second magic mixer black and white conversion because this first sand layer has already been converted and whatever i do in this layer will not affect this layer because this layer was already in black and white and the magic mixer is only converting areas that are in color and that is kind of the secret any area that you see color i'm going to click this button again 
any area you see color if we add another magic mixer layer like i'll do it right now i'll click this plus and now you can see everything turns black and white because this is a white mask and if you'll look at the layer directly below it, the boat it will only convert any area represented by black on this boat layer so that's kind of important if you can understand that you'll understand what is happening here in other words this black and white conversion is only affecting the areas in black because this magic mixer layer is only looking for color and on this boat layer the only area that would be represented in color would be the black part of the mask so therefore this tk magic mixer will only control any of the black portion areas of this mask, which would be the color area. If you can wrap your head around that, you'll understand how this all works. So now I'm going to cheat again, and I think this is a very effective method. Take this mask right here, option or I'll click it, and drag it up. So at this point, it's a duplicate of the boat mask. But now I want to work on this water right here. So let's think about this. If I turn the water area white, it will be the only thing that gets the conversion. So let me do this. Let me go ahead and grab the marquee selection tool. And I'm going to drag right across here like this. And now I've selected this area. Now a lot of this area is already white from these other masks, right? But I'll just be adding the water area. And to do that, just come to your combo or CX panel, click on this red button. That's the fill dialog. Fill it with white. If it's not at white, click the drop down and make sure you click on white and click OK. And now you notice that water turns to black and white. Now I can deselect my selection by either clicking this button on my TK selection brush or this button on my combo panel. I'm going to double click on Magic Mixer and call this water. And now let's do the black and white conversion for the water. I want to darken the water to separate it from the sand. So what I can do is work with the yellow and blue slider. If I drag this slider to the left, I'll make the blues go darker. But you notice how it's only affecting the water. It's not affecting the sand, only the water, not the boat. And it's almost like magical, wouldn't you say? And now I've done three black and white conversions, the sand, the boat, and the water. And the only thing left in color is the sky. If I click the plus on the magic mixer one more time, now I have a sky conversion. And I can leave this mask white because whenever I adjust the magic mixer, it's only going to affect the sky. Now I want to make some of the blue areas of the sky go darker, so I'll take the yellow blue slider and I'll drag it to the left. You see that just to darken up some of the bluer tones that are in that sky to maybe something right around there. And you know, I could play with, let's play with cyan red. Let me make the cyans a little bit darker, maybe by dragging this like that. Maybe I'm gonna pull it back a little bit. I don't wanna go too crazy. Maybe right there. So there is my black and white conversion. But now for some tips and tricks. And I hope you can wrap your head around this, what is happening with a multiple black and white conversion. If you can't, watch this video a couple times and I'm sure it'll come to you. And now for some tips. Now here's my first tip. What I want you to do is make the first TK Magic Mixer layer active by clicking on it. Click the color loom button on the TK Magic Mixer. This gives you a color loom adjustment layer. Basically, it'll let you adjust the luminosity values of all these different colors. Now, I want you to notice it's underneath all of these black and white Magic Mixer conversion layers, meaning it's looking at all the color areas of the image. It will be shown as making the black and white portions that represent those colors lighter or darker. For instance, if I take the red slider, any reds will get darker. If I drag this to the left or to the right, they'll get lighter. So I may lighten up those reds just a little wee bit. And now I can go to yellows. I can darken yellows or lighten yellows. Maybe I'll darken those yellows up just a little wee bit. And if there's any green, we can adjust it. I know there's cyan here, so I may want to darken that sky, the cyan in the sky a little bit. And maybe the blues, darken up those blues a little bit. I think there's a little magenta right in here, so I'll lighten up that magenta a little bit right there. Not much. But now let me shut off this color loom adjustment layer. Here's before and here's after. So a nice big change, but that affects the entire image because it's at the very bottom of the layer stack. 
I'm looking at this area right here. It's a little light. So I'm going to take the yellow and just drag this a little bit more to the left. Just to darken that up to maybe right there. I think that's better. And now for another tip. And these are little finishing touches. I'm going to go ahead and click on the top Magic Mixer layer to make it active. I'm going to click on my Luminosity Mask button on my TK Multi Mask panel. I'm going to click on Midtones 3. And I do this all the time in my TK Friday videos. I'm going to output this to a Curves Adjustment layer. And then I'm going to change the preset for the Curves Adjustment layer from default to Strong Contrast. And now I have some really nice mid-tone contrast. I'm going to take the Opacity slider because it's too strong. I'll take it the whole way off. And then I'll just build it up slowly to, I think, maybe right around here, like 49%. Now, here's another tip. See this button right here on your TK9 combo or CX panel? Click it. This is live clipping. Anything that is in blue is clipped shadows. Anything in red is clipped highlights. Now, if I did have a clipped highlight, I could make this curves layer active, add another curves adjustment layer, and just pull down on the highlights and get rid of the clipping. The red would go away, and I know my clipping was gone. But in this case, I don't need to do that because I don't have any clipping. So to get rid of the live clipping layer, just click this button again. And we're almost done, but I have another really good tip for you when you're working with black and white images, and that is add some beautiful detail to the image. And to do this, I will click on this button on my combo panel. I'm going to hold my command or control key down. Click this button. It stamps all your layers together and gives you a smart object. And then you want to click the ACR button to go into the Adobe Camera Raw filter and go into effects. If effects aren't open, click on effects. And what you want to do is add texture. So I'm going to go ahead and add some texture to this black and white image because black and white images love texture and it looks really great. And also some clarity. I'm going to add Add some really nice clarity don't overdo it but maybe somewhere right around there i'm not worried about the sky i'll take care of that in a bit and you could work with dehaze but i don't think i need dehaze but i love what the sand is doing beautiful texture on the sand boat and water i don't like it in the sky i'm going to click ok but if i needed to come back and readjust i could double click camera raw filter and go ahead and readjust this but i don't want it in the sky so what i can do is see the sky selection button right here if you double click the sky selection button, you'll select the foreground and not the sky. You see that? And now all I have to do is put a layer mask on here. So if we come up here to the combo or CX panel, click this button right here, we will put a layer mask on here, only giving us that detail in the foreground. So let me shut this layer off. Here's before. And notice it's only on the foreground. It's not in the sky. And here is the after. But now we have some beautiful detail there. And if it's too strong, you could double click camera raw filter and again, readjust it. Or you may want to just come to the opacity and maybe just pull that opacity back just a little wee bit if you, if you felt it was too strong. Again, here's the before and here's the after. And now for a finishing touch, I'll go and add a vignette for my TK actions. If your TK actions aren't open, click your TK button on either the combo or CX panel. Click vignette, a Gaussian blur dialog comes up. I just click OK. And let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. Just a little vignette at 30% opacity. If you want a stronger vignette, increase the opacity. But that is it. We started out here and we end up here with this really cool looking black and white image. Well, there you go. Now I hope you know what is happening when you're doing a multiple black and white conversion using the TK Magic Mixer panel. I hope this cleared some things up for you. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.